The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 1st, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We knew I make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-664. If you can't dial them, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it early, please. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger Cinema, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, I've got a mixed bag out here. You've got the Russell trading up one point, so it's flat, but it's still up. New York Stock Exchange up 15 points. That, too, is flat. The Dow's off 64. The S&P's down 14. NASDAQ 184. Semis are off 102. Tranny's down 765. That's nearly 5% to the downside. Gold's off 29 bucks. That's 1.5%. 1925 is the print there. Silver's off 35 cents, printing out at 2476. Lights recruit off a buck 20, 9908 there. Natural gas up 4 cents, 568 is the print. And the 30 year treasury off 8 ticks, printing out at 149.26. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside, you've got Mercado Libre up 37 bucks, 3%. Dexcom, $16, 3%. Equinix, 13 bucks, nearly 2%. Shopify, 14 bucks, 2%. And HubSpot up 12 bucks, that's nearly 3%. To the downside, it is Monolithic Power Systems off 25 bucks, that's 5%. Norfolk Southern off $18, 6.5%. Old Dominion down 6% or 17 bucks. SVB Financial, 17 bucks. 3% to the downside. J.B. Hunt, so it's all those transport stocks really leading things down off 16 bucks and 8% there. But that's not where we're going to begin. Well, even though we've begun there, we're going to go take a look at the short-term time frame charts out here. So give me just a moment to uh, switch the uh, screens up. Then we're going to look at the 30-minute time frame charts. And the reason that we're going to look at those, because this is the cool part of the day, we're going to find out here shortly whether markets are going to continue creaming lower or whether uh, we have I found a uh, Friday bottom out here. And what I mean by that, momentarily you'll see the screens. Just give me one second here. You should see the 30-minute time frame screens right now. Yes, let's start with that in the upper left-hand corner. In fact, I'll just simply, we'll, do, we'll take them one at a time, and I'll just simply expand them out. So here's the ES. We're all looking at the same thing. What you're going to notice, what you should notice, is that you've got an RMI, Rhodes Momentum Bottom Pattern, that firmed, uh, confirmed right here at 1230. That was when it generated a bullish hammer candle. And it also was the bar following bar number nine of a TD9 count. And that says if we see a close, so we're at 110 right now. If we see a close below that low, that low, by the way, is low below the hammer candle. Not testing it. Doesn't matter if you test it. It's got to be a close below. So the level there to be watching on your screen is 450650. If there's a close below that, then the 30-minute chart will have failed, that TD9 count, and tell us about a strong momentum move to the downside. If there's traction and this traction takes hold, the first level of resistance is going to be in the 4519 to 4521 level. That's the oscillator and change line in the bottom of the profile. If this is just a counter trend rally and it can get traction, then price should find resistance at 4529. That is the center of that 30 minute bullish structured profile. So cool, because we're going to find out here live or get a feel uh, live by 130 what the intent of the market is. But you still want to watch that number all day. Even if it doesn't close below it, that's still a number you'd be watching. The NQ, we have a similar pattern. Now, in the case of the NQ, its only pattern so far 
is the TD9 count. It would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm its um, Rosemont Dominicator signal. You know what? They all have wave number sevens as well. That's letter G that you see on our screen out here. So right now for the NQ, it was the close at 1 o'clock that you're going to be paying attention, or the low at 1 o'clock. And that low is 14,733. So you want to watch that. Really what you're looking at here in, in the numbers that you're placing on your pad of paper, wherever you're writing them down, is you want to see failures for all four equity future contracts. So that's what you want to watch. Now, wave seven here on the 30-minute uh, chart for the NQ can extend itself. So even if these other patterns fail, you know, that's one you've got to still keep an eye on. In fact, it's the same inside the ES Mini out there. Let's look at the Dow. If we take a look at the 30-minute chart, for the uh, Dow out here, let's get rid of that. I don't know how to get rid of those things that pop up. But here you've also got a TD9 count. You could have a Rhodesmith indicator signal. It needs a bullish reversal candle. But the key level to be watching inside the Russell 2000 is going to be, I'm sorry, the Dow. We're looking at the Dow. Let me restate that. It's the Dow that we're looking at, the YM. The level there to be watching or the price level is going to be 34,455. A close below that says that we head lower. Now let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. I got ahead of myself. Here's the Russell. And as we take a look at the Russell, it doesn't have the bottoming patterns that the ES, the NQ, and the Dow have. What this is doing, it's finally testing the lows of yesterday. The other indices are trading, or the equity future contracts, are trading below the lows of yesterday. So the Russell arguably stronger than the others. So here, what you'd be looking for is a close below that low. That was at 4.30 yesterday afternoon. That was the TD9 count. And that would be 2062.80. A close below 2062.80 says we go further south. So you've got the numbers. That's the cool thing coming on here now at 1 o'clock, having these patterns identify themselves uh, for us. And so now you've, it's, it should be able to answer the question with regard to what the intent of the market is for the rest of the day. Now, let's say that these things fail. If they fail, where is price headed to? Great question. So to answer that, we're going to go change windows. And by changing windows, we're going to go take a look at the daily time frame. So now that's what you should see on your screens out there. And on the daily time frame, what you'll notice about the ES Mini, that's the upper left panel, you'll notice that that red-green squiggly line, that's the oscillator and change line, that that recently changed colors. When that changes colors and you get a topping signal, which we have, you've got a TD9 count top for the daily time frame. Typically, we see price and that level catch up with each other. Yes, there's a new profile that did form inside the ES Mini. That new profile has supported 44.52. So price is likely targeting 44.86 or 44.52. I don't know whether it can break below 44.52, but that is the level of support. Those two numbers. Now that 44.86 number, that's the oscillator and change line. That's going to change uh, as price goes up or down, but you can use that as a guideline. But 44.52 is not going to change. That's the new profile that formed yesterday. Now, important for you to understand, this profile formed above the prior profile. From a trend standpoint, that is a bullish message. So our expectation should be at this stage, doesn't guarantee it, but our expectation should be that 44.52 52 will hold. It's very possible that 4486 will hold. We probably get that signal or could get that signal from the Dow. So instead of going to the right, I'm going to go down down to the lower left. Why? The Dow does not have a topping pattern, by the way, but it is feeling sympathy for the uh, ES and the NQ, which do have topping signals. And here, what we do see is that the oscillator and change line also changed color for the YM for the daily time frame. That level is being tested as we speak right now. The actual oscillator and change line reading as of 114, it's 34,447. The actual low of the day is 34,455. This, in essence, is basically a test of that line. And a test of rejection? Well, we'll discuss that when we come back to the spring. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we were taking a look at the daily chart for the Dow Equity Future contract. What we identified is there's no real topping pattern, but there is a sign of price getting up to resistance and turning down. So that in itself can be a top, just not the type of patterns that you and I look for. And that's at that 35, 244 level. That was a TD9 count breakdown area. And it's a cool tool to have. I, I teach that uh, to you. We talk about it certainly during the show. Uh, you can most certainly subscribe to Mastering Probability. You do that for less than 30 days. It doesn't cost you anything, and you're going to learn about this pattern. And you really should want to learn about this pattern. To be able to identify, you know, part of trading is being able to identify support and resistance. And the cool thing about the TD9 count pattern, it's objective. There's no subjectivity to it. You just simply follow the rules. And the other thing that I've learned over time in using this is that uh, I would never have chosen 35244 as the uh, breakdown level. And then nobody with inside TFNN would have chosen that. That's just not something that we teach out here. We would have chosen maybe that swing point where it's got that label of C or the high just before that because that would have been the real resistance area. And it still is. But that's not where price actually broke down from, not in the TD9 count series. And we can see that price got up there and it's pulled back. So what the YM is doing right now is it's getting down to, it's very close to test net green offset and change line. Now a test and rejection of that level, and what I mean by that is a close above it. Doesn't matter what happens intercession. You can easily see price pull back to the bottom of its new daily profile. The Dow's new daily profile support levels at 34,321. And the resistance is up at the 35,281 level. So we've got the new profiles that have formed. And uh, price is either going to find support at the South Southern change line or get down to that 34,321 level. Now, if price closes below that, and because the line would be green, it does not necessarily mean that price will get back to 32,578. That's the breakout level. It could, but that's not what the meaning would be when price is below a green oscillator and change line. 
Let's go take a look at the other two equity future contracts. Let's take a look at the NQ as we take a look at it. It's got quite a ways to go before it gets to its oscillator and change line. And that is a likely price target. Now, the NQ also forming a new profile, the bottom of which is at 14391 The center, where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value, and that fair value is between 14391 and 15268 That's at 14683 So that could be a support area. But either price is going to find support there, or it's going to get back to that oscillator and change line, or it's going to get back to the bottom of that uh, profile, 14,391. Now, of course, you're saying, well, gee, Steve, oh, that's great. Well, what you want to do when price is getting back to areas of support is be able to identify a bottom, very much like the Dow Equity Future contract was doing on that 30-minute time frame. We know it had a TD9 count pattern as we came in at 1 o'clock. And if price closes below that 1 o'clock low, that says that the Dow Equity Future contract should head lower. And we've identified those price targets. Well, in sky, the and Q, we're in wave number seven, which looks like that will extend itself even if the uh, TD9 count uh, pattern fails out there. But nonetheless, the TD9 count pattern would have failed, and that would still suggest lower price. And that next target would be 14,683. And below 14,683 would be 14,560-ish. Again, that oscillator and change line will change as price moves up and down. So you use it as a guideline. In the case of the Russell 2000, she has been trading inside a sideways consolidation. It attempted a breakout three days ago. But, you know, we've got that two-day rule out there. We don't like one-hit wonders. Not that we don't like them. They're usually good songs out there. But that's it. Usually it's that, and it's kapui. So here we require a two-bar close above resistance or below support to confirm what its intentions are. In this case here, the intention was to try to break out, but it didn't do that. The very next session, price gets back inside. Now, what that also sets up is a run for its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 2060. The uh, Russell 2000 also formed a new profile yesterday. That new profile top is at 2098 and the bottom is at 2049. So you've got 2060 and 2049 would be the levels to be watching for inside the Russell 2000, at least as to where its targets are. So that covers the four equity future contracts out there. Apparently, when I was doing the uh, review of the show, uh, someone heard me say, and I must have said it, was that gold was trading up. Gold is not trading up. If that's what I said, my apology. Uh, gold right now, the June contract is down 30 bucks. 1923.80 is the print. Let's go take a look at what gold is doing. Because uh, that must have everything was happening for us. So there must have been a reason to have misstated what gold was doing so that we could immediately go to take a look at those charts. So now what you should see on your screen are the eight panel gold charts. The month ended. What do we know about the month? We know the month was unable, even though pressed, pressed and tried to close above its monthly TD9 count. It was unable to do that. Price is back inside its profile, but it's testing that green oscillator and change line, which is basically at 1923. The actual number as we speak is 191940. In the case of the weekly chart, it's got to sell the D point. Price is pulled back and it's testing support, 1909.50. So again, price is coming back to support on the monthly and on the weekly. With regard to the daily chart, the daily chart just simply shows that gold is trading between support, which is its breakout level, 1895.60, and resistance, which happens to be its oscillator and change line. Right now, that's at about 1959. So as far as gold, it's just moving sideways uh, with inside that range out there nothing else. Now, on a 30-minute time frame chart, I don't have a bottom signal. I have price below a breakout level of 1928, and price is testing a prior TD9 count bottom. This tells us that if we see a close below 1923, and we're at 1923.30 right now, we should expect we should expect gold to move lower. There's also a TD9 count on the 60-minute time frame. The TD9 count says price has to close below 1922.10. So let's use 1922.10 as the number that price would need to close below to suggest that it continues to move lower. If I take a look at the other gold charts out here, not really too much. I see on a five-hour time frame, a TD9 count top, price pulling back to its breakout level of 1920. Uh, and uh, no bottoming signal here, but again, a bottom can form when price pulls back to the breakout level. So you got the 1922, 1925. These would be the areas to watch with regard to Goldilocks. Jimmy says the golden move is perplexing today. Um, so when I see a message like that, I say, let's get unperplexed. Can we get unperplexed? Now, I don't know why uh, Jimmy thinks it's, unper it's perplexing, but if we do what I would do, what the things that I do is simply go take a look at how's gold trading and all the currencies out here. So to do that, we have to change screens. So if you bear with me just for a moment, uh, we're getting pretty decent at this. And what you should see on your screen right now is gold priced in dollars, euros, 
yen, so as I can get that signal back there, and pounds. So with regard to gold right now, uh, gold is just having an inside day in terms of euros out there. So not really providing you and I with much of a signal. Uh, price is traded with inside the candle session in pounds, so not giving a substantial signal of falling apart. The same, I'm sorry, that was in yen, but the same thing true in pounds, meaning that yesterday's lows have not been taken out. That is not the case in terms of uh, price taken out in, in terms of dollars. Price has just slightly taken out that low. It's not trading below it right now. But if it does, you'd expect a pullback. And so we know that gold is trading between support and resistance has been for quite a while, a couple weeks now. And again, that's the 1895.60 level up to about 1959. So uh, I don't know if uh, what the perplex was about. How about plexed? There you go. Um, yeah, so just, again, trying to provide additional information to everybody. So, so you know, the thing is, we've been trained to really only take a look at instruments priced in our, our local currency. Now, that same training would be if you were in Europe. You'd be taking a look at charts and you'd be looking at the instruments typically priced in euros out there. Or if you were in London, you'd be looking at it in pounds. Or if you were over in uh, Tokyo, you'd be looking at it in terms of yens because you, you think in your local currencies. But this is a global market. We need to know how very important instruments are trading in all of the major currencies out there. That's a cool tool that is a part of eSignal, a really cool tool to be able to do that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Martinez, California, and speak with Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How's your Friday going? Oh, it's going great, Steve. How are you doing? I am doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, Overstock.com. OSTK is the uh, symbol out there that you're calling about. Uh, tell the folks what you're doing, how I can best help you. Well, I had a real good uh, trade on this, uh, their last earnings. I happened to be in it before they announced and it went, you know, you can see on that chart where it shot up there. Yes. Back in, you know, kind of latter part of February. But my question was, is going back to that gap um, and it's dealing with wider volume, which I'm watching. I'm just, you know, looking to potentially get back in this. Is there anything that you show on your charting on, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, like a TAS level or you know, anything down at that? break or where it had that gap that would make sense to be watching for as far as those kind of levels as well? So the answer is yes, sort of. So in essence, at the top of the gap, which would in essence be the low of February 24th out there, it turns out that on the trading session of March 14th, that was a TD9 count bottom. It was the bar following, uh, It was uh, March 15th was actually bar number nine. The low took place on uh, the 14th of, uh, of March. So 42.39 is a key level to be watching. If price were to close below that, then Brent, I think what that would be signaling is the gap should at least get closed, meaning a test of the high from February 22nd and that's at 40.13. And if price closes below that, even if, it's, even if it's with light volume, it could still get down and test the bottom of that uh, candle, and that is at the 35.67. So at 42.39, you've got TD9 count uh, uh, support. And you also have on the weekly, you've got support at 41.53. So I would say that if you see a close below 41.53, that's a pretty good indication to us that it's going to at least get down to that prior swing point. And that's coming from the black background charts. Brent, as we take a look at these black charts here, are there any questions that you have about what we've shared so far? Or is there anything else that you might have observed that I should pick up on? I guess you could argue there's potentially, and I can see that there is a possibility of some uh, AV equals CD patterns on that chart you're looking sure. at there on the on the daily and i haven't charted them out I, I kind of just roughly did some of them but i think the bigger one would would get you down to the that bottom that it made uh some Correct. Of the smaller ones probably not that far yeah, and so I put that in. So good point there. So the A point here, folks, for the A to B equals CD that uh, Brent is referring to, and the one that I would have picked as well, is the high would be March 1st, the low would be March 14th, the C point would be uh, March 18th, the high March 18th, and the one-to-one -one gets us to 3627. And as Brent has pointed out, that would then get us into that swing point from February 22nd. Now, just because we drew it an A to B equals CD, we know that you've got to get a close below 42.39, preferably two closes below that. And we also know that, and so I wouldn't, wouldn't be like telling you to jump on board and go short if you get a close below that. And the reason is because there is potential support at 40.43. But you're absolutely correct. There is that potential for that A to B equals CD to the downside. Should we go look at the white chart, see if there's anything else out there? Yeah, please. Okay, so let's put up our eight panel charts out here. This is going to have multiple time frames for each of us to look at. Now, because price is pulling back to a potential support area, that being where there's a TD9 count bottom, what we would love to see is some type of bottoming signal on the short term time frame chart. So, what I'm using here for the eight panels is I'm using a 15 minute, a 30, 65, 130, and 195. I know it seems odd, 130, 65, and 195, but folks, that's because those are equally divisible by the six and a half hour day. And when I take a look at a chart, I don't want to look at a chart that has one candle is 120 minutes and the next one is only 45 minutes or something like that. So we want equality here. Now, when we take a look at a 15 minute time frame chart out here, do we have any kind of a bottom pattern as we speak right now? And the answer is um, we might. Let me see where this current low is. Whoops. Shoot. Current low of the current bar is 42.58. And it would need to get below 40, oh, 50, 40, okay. So the 15 minute chart is going to give you a uh, completed TD9 count, well, by two o'clock. You'll actually have the nine count pattern in by 145, but the completed pattern by two. Uh, in the 30 minute chart, it looks like you also have, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So here, this is really key. 
Brent, as we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, the one thing that we should notice is price has been unable to close above that red oscillator and change line. So even if we get a bottom that forms out here, you've really got to see a close above that. If you did, then that would be suggesting that we should see a move up to about the 44.31 to 44.51 level. But this, this oscillator and change line has really acted as a deterrent, so to speak, and so it's really important to watch that, even though this could form a TD9 count bottoming signal uh, within the next hour or so. On the 65-minute uh, chart, no bottoming signal there, nor on the 130 nor on the 195. So it's the real shorter term time frame charts and the one on the 30 minute hasn't confirmed just yet. And of course we know we need to see price get above uh, the oscillator and change line. The daily time frame that we're in doesn't give us any signals other than just prices pulling back into that uh, TD9 count. You can now see that. My question is to myself is what's the volume metric? So I'm, I'm just black on, back on my black background charts and the volume on that March 14th day was 1.3 million shares and you're pulling back with 835. So it's certainly pulling back in that area with lighter volume. And I would say if it can hold, if it can hold, I'm not sure. I mean, to, uh, I guess if it holds, it's the potential for a bottom. It really then want to go back to those short term time frame charts and get some type of confirmation. Does that make sense? Yeah, for me, I'm just going to try to be patient. Even if I miss something, hey, that's fine. I'd rather it get, with it being as close as it is to this gap, yeah. I'd like to just see that get filled. It, it will complete that, you know, other pattern we looked at. That, you know, and I'm just glad you gave me the levels to be watching it. If it does break those, then that would, again, I agree with you, give it, uh, at least in my mind, would think that it, it's got the potential to increase that it's going to go down and do that. Yeah, what well, we do know, and the, and the reason why, I, and, and I agree with you, I absolutely agree with you. The the, the thing here, folks, uh, you know, inside my mind as I'm looking at that, and you too, is price is truly pulling back into support areas because both the daily and the weekly are bullish structured profiles out there, and it, it you don't know whether it's you don't know whether it's the bottom of the profile 4043 or it's the center which is at 4281 or it's somewhere in between, uh, but we do know that price is in between the profiles on the weekly, so 4153 is likely to be hit Brent and then you can kind of go from there so I, I I agree with you on this one I think the other thing would be it'd be nice to see the market bottoming too um, you know before taking a long trade here or anyplace else okay no I think that makes sense Steve and thank yeah. you so much for doing the, at the beginning of the show doing the short term you know uh, charts on the equity futures I appreciate that uh, absolutely. You know, it's always great to uh, at least have an opportunity, you know, live for people to take a look at the patterns that are out there, what levels to be watching, then to give us indication of what the market's intent is. So uh, thanks for those comments. And uh, Brent, have a fantastic weekend. And hopefully we'll hear from you again soon. Do the same, Steve. I hope you have a great weekend. And okay. uh, I just plan on talking to you soon. Sounds great. Let's go to our next question out here. This one coming in from Jim C. And Jim wants to take a look at So we're going to have to do this when we get back from the break for the most part. But we'll at least get it fired up right now. It's on NVIDIA. And we know we've got a number of folks uh, that like to follow NVIDIA. So that's where we're going to get fired up. We'll take a look at The question is, Steve, can you please review the market profile charts for NVIDIA? So that's what we're going to put up on our screen right now. If you are inside our Tiger's Den, you'll be able to see those. And, folks, you can get inside the Tiger's Den right now for a year for $1 everybody should do that and right now if you're in the tiger's den you'd see those profile levels we'll be right back are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the bay area including the surrounding st petersburg tampa and clearwater markets tiger real estate llc is a firm that has extensive experience in the tampa bay area whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Jim C. wanted to take a look at NVIDIA. He was most interested in the uh, daily profile levels. That's the daily chart that we're looking at on your screen right now. And uh, so specifically, Jim, your the bottom of the profile is at 259.12. That's your support area. And odds favor at the moment that that may be where price is going to go target. And we've covered the reason why. So as we take a look at the NVIDIA chart, you're going to see a nice road momentum indicator top that formed out here on November 22nd. It uh, topped along with the NASDAQ 100. Now we can see that this formed a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. That confirmation came on March the 9th. You can also see it had a wave number seven. That confirmation came on uh, March the 9th. In fact, um, speaking of wave number sevens, that's just a, a part, a very small part, a smidgen part of the uh, Chapman wave out there. And I believe Basil is doing a workshop in a couple weeks on a Wednesday. Uh, 13th, 14th, somewhere right around there. So you certainly want to come to the homepage of TFN.com and sign up for that. But then we can see that that Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom from back on March the 8th, 9th, turned into a TD nine count top right at the breakdown resistance level of 385.95. Jimmy's short NVIDIA. I get that. It makes sense. Now, what price is doing, you want to watch this here today, Jim, is price is testing that green oscillator and change line. See how that change colors? The change colors on the trading session looks like a March the 24th out there might have done it the day before when that changes colors especially after there's a top we typically expect price and that line to catch up to each other now if price closes above or at the asset or in change line which right now is printing at 266.75 price at 264.85 i don't know what price is going to close today but if price did close by that green asset or in change line you might want to consider closing out that trade because a key level of support will have held even if price uh, closes below that level, then your next price target is going to be 259.12. So you'd want to at least tighten up your trade there. If price can close below 259.12, then you're free to run down to its breakout area, which will be 231.72. So watch the 266.70-ish area. That will help. Now, because price is back in an area near support, again, we go, we do the same thing over and over again. I know it seems boring, but once you do it enough times, it gets pretty exciting. What do you mean? Because you're looking for bottom signals. 15 minute, you can see the TD9 count bottom, price above the oscillator and change line. It still has a minute here to go, but it looks like it'll close above that. That suggests we should see a run for 267. TD9 count on the NVIDIA 30 minute chart. That suggests we should go make a run for 267. 
bar number eight on the 65 minute chart that's forming. Now it has to get to bar number nine in order to complete that pattern. Bar number eight completes in another five minutes out here and we know that a bottom can form on bar number eight. The 130 minute time frame chart does not complete until 150. Well, that also is gonna uh, be another five minutes. So these are also suggesting you could have some bottoming signals. I don't know how the next 65 minutes after that or the next hour or two hours and 10 minutes are going to work on NVIDIA with regard to the 130 minute chart. No such bottoming signal on the 195. So you're going to focus on the daily. You're going to focus on that 267-ish area. What we can say is that the short-term charts, 15 and 30, are suggesting that price wants to move up to that area. Now, that could be just simply where a counter-trend move uh, completes, that, completes that, Jim. Uh, we just don't know. But these are what I would be looking for. Now, if price closes above 267, that's going to suggest a run to the 271-ish area out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Dan. Dan F. And Dan says, is now a good entry on MVIS. Don't know the answer to that, but let's go take a look at Mavis out here, MVIS. Let's go see what we can find. That's going to take just a few moments here to populate those screens. This is microvision. And the question is, uh, looks like a TD9 count on a 10-minute and on a 30. So we're going to get that 30-minute chart. I've got a, I use a 15. And you're absolutely right. You are going, you have a completed, uh, you will have a completed TD9 count pattern on a 30-minute chart for microvision as you come into this close doesn't matter where it ends because you already have bar number nine. Now, what that suggests to you, Dan, is just simply that price should then go target its oscillator and change line. And on a 30-minute basis, that's 448. No idea whether price will get above that. Because it's red, if it tests and rejects it, that says you go back down and you retest this uh, TD9 count level. Or below that, you get back to the breakout area of 407. So that's a 30-minute time frame chart. I know you, you, you see something on the 10-minute chart out there. Look, on a 15-minute, we've got a TD9 count as well. And this is suggesting a run to the 453 level. So it does seem like it's in the cards for MVIS to at least make a run for the 448, 453 area. Now, I'm not saying that it has to do that by 4 p.m. today. That's just simply its message to both you and I. What else do I see out here from MVIS? Really not a whole lot else. Um, what I mean by that is you don't have a bottoming signal, Dan, on the 65, nor do you on the 130, nor do you on the 195. So at this stage here, until proven otherwise, I would think that any rally is just a counter trend move. Now, the real key that you're watching here is that price is trading right now below the center of its uh, bull bearish structured daily profile. The important thing there is that price was above it for two bars. It was above it for that big, huge bar on March 29th, as well as the day after. If this was only a counter trend move, and the day's not over, so it still could be. If this is only a counter trend move, price would find support at the center of that profile. The center is at 452. The oscillator and change line is just a few pennies above that level. That's at uh, 456. So watch the end of the day, because if you did get a close above 456 out there, then key support will have held. So I hope that helps you out, Dan. A nice work on your part for the uh, 10 minute, although we didn't see it, and the uh, 30 minute chart. You're doing great at picking out those T nine count patterns the next question here coming in from eddie eddie says according to timing the trade nvidia is in a confirmed a to b equals cd up to the 315 level so we're going back to nvidia and because we're doing the a to b equals cd patterns out here we're going to go take a look at uh, that screen which is our three panel screen out here let's get nvidia back up and we're just going to take a look at the daily and so we're going to open this up and Eddie's talking about a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. Hmm. Hmm. So, Eddie, I, uh, I, 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 so I guess what you're looking at, I know what you're looking at. This is what Eddie's looking at. Eddie's looking at an A point down here, or should be looking at an A point on March the 8th. And his B point out here is going to be on March the 22nd. And it was a one-day wonder, a one-day pullback to the low on March 23rd. Now, that retracement there is 25%. And, Eddie, I really like to see something closer to a 38% retracement to really signal an A to B equals CD pattern out here. Yes, the very next session, which was March 24th, which had volume of – give me a moment here. We'll see it. Had volume of uh, – 87 million absolutely took out that so-called swing point with 54 million on March 22nd. But here's the deal. 
And the deal is this, that swing point that you used as a C point had 50 million shares, you trade into it 34 million shares, price is in it right now. If there is a close below 266.12, even if it's on lighter volume, price should pull back further. It should pull back to at least that 259 area. Now, let's go assume that it, I don't know if I can do that or not on this, shoot. Let me see if I can. I can do it on my other software. Whoops. Let's see if I can put in the A point here, which is the same A point, March 8th. The B point now, I would say, would be March 29th. And the C point, I don't know if this will let me do it or not. Let's see. Well, yeah, it won't. Shoot. So I can't do that for you, so that's a bummer. Um, but so I just wanted to see what that retracement was. So, Eddie, you know... You've got one pattern there. So you look, here's what we do know, Eddie. This formed a TD nine count top. I don't care whether it's an A to B equals C D or not in place out here. This formed a TD nine count top on March 28th, 29th that is. It's pulling back, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Now we have to see if the 259.12 level holds as support. So I hope that helps you out. See Roads with see if it ends. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
so one last uh, thought here on uh, uh, NVIDIA. What I'm able to do with this A to B equals CD tool, I've got to anchor it to, to uh, candles. And so, Eddie, what I did was, and, I, and you were, you're right on track here trying to identify another A to B equals CD. I would say it's the only A to B equals CD pattern here. And when we take a look at that uh, retracement so far from the B point, March 29th high to the current low out there, we're already at 32%, so we're getting real close to that point three eight two. So ideally, what price will do for you is pull back to the bottom of that profile, 259. That'll give you a point three eight two retracement. But then price still has to clear that uh, TD9 count top. And if it does that, that's high March 29th, then that A to B equals CD pattern that you were looking at would come to fruition out there. So thanks so much for writing in. I do hope that that helps you out. Um, you've been uh, doing well with puts on this. You go to cash at the end of the day. What? GME. Uh, so let me type in GME real quick. Is that GameStop out here? And just to uh, provide to Michael P what the signals are. So, Michael. Uh, what GameStop did today is it got up to resistance. That's the top of a new profile that formed yesterday. That was at 188.44. This could, it's a bullish structured profile. Uh, perhaps price is going to pull back to 133 a level. That's the center of its bullish structured profile, 122.86. Um, let me see if I can get these other charts here. GME. I don't know if it'll do it here in the next uh, 15 seconds. We've got about about a half a minute or so. So I'm trying to get that fired up to you because your question is, where do you see things going? And uh, so, uh, again, we're talking about GameStop. You say it's up today. No, I've got GameStop being down today. Oh, okay, I take it back. Okay, it's slightly up because it is up above yesterday's high. So with regard to GameStop out here, so I can switch over to that eight-panel chart, do it here real quickly. And uh, so before we get off the air... And uh, the day, so it's got a TD9 count top. So what this looks like to me, Michael, is price should pull back to that oscillator and change line. That should be its first target, 147. Below that, 133, and below that, 122. That's what we look at when we take a look at GameStop out there. Folks, stay tuned. You've got two more great hours left. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. After that, Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home, and I'll see you on Magnificent Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks so much for joining us, folks.